is okay today. Hope everything's going all right. Um, what I wanted to share with you today is just a little information about um, one of the PBS resources, um, Cat in the Hat. So to begin with, one of the things I like to mention um, is that kids are just natural born scientists. Um, we all know that when kids are toddlers, what's the one question that they constantly ask when they're two and three? They're constantly asking why, why is this? Why does this happen? Or even babies when you, when um, say for example, you're sitting, they're sitting at on a high chair and they're dropping things on the floor and they uh, they notice that you pick it up. So then they'll do it again just to see if you do it again. All of those same type of things. So kids are just natural born scientists. And so what I wanna share with you today is just a little resource that kind of introduces um, ways that kids are naturally curious and then really simple tips that you can have and simple uh, games and that type of thing that you can play just to help your children in that um, natural inquisitive process. So first of all, I'm going to show you this graphic, but one thing I really, really want you to, to keep in mind with this is that I don't want you to worry about the words that are on here. I don't want you to worry about um, all of those type of things, and I'm going to kind of explain why. Scientists, so we all know that scientists, they make observations, they ask questions, they make predictions, and they carry out all sorts of investigations to um, to see if their predictions are correct, right? So I know like when I was in school, we called that a, a hypothesis, right? We were looking at and thinking about ways that we, things based on things that we have learned, we are making predictions about that. So in doing this, they discover new ideas, they have to see if it made sense, if it didn't, then they go back, they ask new questions, or maybe that question, once they get to the answer, leads to a new question, and they'll investigate that. So scientists and science inquiry is just all about different ways to understand the world around us. And this is both in our natural environment. So like here in this example, it's actually showing um, the, the life cycle or talking about a little bit of the life cycle of a caterpillar. So when we think about our natural environment, but it can be also things that are man-made or human-made and about sharing that understanding with the world around us. So the thing is, is like I said, it's not important to know all of these terms. It's not important to memorize any of this. Um, the thing is, is that we just really want to tap in to that natural curiosity that children already have. So when we think about that, there are already ways that you're going to be seeing this in your everyday life and, or you're seeing it in your children's play. And part of that um, can be something as simple as when they're building a block tower. So they're trying to see maybe how many blocks they can get before the tower falls over. Or they're trying to see how many blocks does it take to get from point A to point B that type of thing. Or when we're investigating something as simple in the bathtub, we're investigating sink and float. Does this object sink? Does this object float? And then what, thinking about and asking further questions. Why do we think that? Why does this sink, but this floats? All of those type of things. Or even building something like building a racetrack. So has your children ever taken blocks and build a racetrack in the middle of the living room floor? just to kind of look at and investigate and maybe go around objects or over objects or under objects. All of that is um, based on science inquiry. We just may not think of it in that way. So what I want to introduce to you is a little about Cat in the Hat. So this Cat in the Hat is a little different um, than the Cat in the Hat that you and I grew up with. Um, this Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that as a PBS kids show. And this particular show is designed to spark that love of learning and interest in science and engineering, um, mainly in preschool children. But again, and so we're talking that kind of three to five target age range. However, uh, the concepts that are covered um, fit all the way from three to probably age eight or above. Again, it's similar to when I was uh, giving the talk the other day about PBS Kids uh, games and their apps. Um, kind of use that as a, a guide. It's not necessarily intended as a hard, fast kind of rule. So um, we've got Nick um, and then we've got Sally and they are the children and, that are guided by the cat in the hat. So they're looking up ways. Um, so 
they always go on a some sort of science adventure. Uh, maybe it's shrinking to bee size so that they can discover and explore a hive to figure out how honey is made. Or maybe they are flying with birds to uh, learn about migration and why that happens or how that happens. Or maybe they're even going to somewhere called Spansylvania um, to figure out how to make a bridge that's long enough or strong enough to hold um, a dragon that's there. So as they're guided by the cat in the hat, they're engaged in all sorts of science inquiry and engineering design questions and processes. Um, but again, it's all put on such a, a, a kid basis. They're making they're asking questions, they're defining problems, making observations, all of those predictions, planning investigations, they collect data that they do, um, make new discoveries, ask new problems, or ask new questions to figure out new problems. Um, and then they generate an idea how the world works. So um, the cat and the hat in and of itself, it is a uh, two 11 minute episodes um, that go along with some sort of uh, short corresponding clip in the middle. Um, it usually is bouncing off one idea that, or maybe both ideas that are in those, or concept that are in both of those 11 minute clips. Um, so each center or each adventure always, as I mentioned, always uh, revolves around some specific science and engineering concept. So now that we've talked a little bit about Cat in the Hat, I'm actually going to show you a little bit of where you can find some of the resources. There we go. Um, a little bit of where you can find some of the resources. So we're just going to start um, similar to what I did the other day. Uh, we're going to go through, as I mentioned um, before, don't worry about trying to capture any of these links. Um, I'll go back and I'll put them into the comment box. So that's not a problem at all. So you can catch them here in just a few minutes. Um, but you can go back and look at them. So the first one I'm going to start with is just the cat in the hat page. And so as you can see, I've got the, um, it does have um, the cat. You can tell that he's saying something here. Right now I've got it muted just so that you can hear me. Um, but there's all sorts of stuff going on on this page. So as you can see, there are three little buttons down here at the bottom. There's games, there's video, and then there's print. And so with that, um, there might be coloring pages or there might be some other activities that you can do together as a family. Those are all going to be listed here. Now, the three games that are highlighted here, um, if you listened to the webinar that I did or to the Facebook Live video that I did last week, um, those three games right there also live, we kind of, or I, I call it live, in the PBS Kids Games app. So you can play them online here, but you can also play them in the PBS Kids Games app that I mentioned last week. So the second um, tab that I'm going to take you to is actually in the PBS Kids uh, or PBS Parents page. Um, I mentioned to you before that PBS Parents is a great resource um, for lots, and it's a really easy resource or easy website to navigate. Um, so one of the things that you can do um, right up here at the top, there's a tab that says Shows. So you can look at, there's all sorts of different, as you can see, all of the PBS Kids shows that are available here. But for today's um, topic, I'm actually going to concentrate on the cat in the hat. So there's always a clip that's at the, at the top of it. Then the cool thing about this particular uh, website is um, there are articles. So there are blog posts or um, other articles that talk about ways to engage children in science learning or 10 simple books that you can find to engage your children in learning. Um, and then as you scroll on down the page, you're going to see that there's lots of hands-on activities. I'm going to highlight one of those activities here in just a minute, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. So most of these things, uh, as I mentioned before, a lot of the um, activities that PBS Kids offers, they do it so that you have plenty of resources already at your fingertips. And if you don't have something at your fingertips, just use something else. That doesn't matter. If you don't have exactly what it's asking for, make up your own. Um, we encourage you to do that. Um, we're not asking you or PBS doesn't want you or KET for that matter, does not want you to going out there and trying to buy the biggest and greatest thing. We're wanting you to be able to, to understand and know that learning occurs every day within simple routines, within everything that you're doing, you can um, take advantage of those teachable moments. 
So down here at the bottom of the page, you're going to see there are other games and apps. And like I mentioned before, a lot of these games are available either on um, the PBS Kids website or they're available in um, the PBS Kids Games app. I'm going to highlight two um, specific Cat in the Hat apps here in just a minute. But I just wanted to show you that down here at the bottom of the page, you can um, locate those as well. So the next um, tab that I'm going to take you to, um, this is talking about a relatively, uh, this app came out probably, I don't know, about two years ago maybe, give or take a little bit, I'm trying to remember. Um, but this is called the Cat in the Hat Builds That. Um, and this particular app, it also, um, because of the way that Cat in the Hat is, it's all based off of STEM learning. So again, we're talking about science, technology, education, and math. Um, and this has a bunch of different little mini games that are within it. So as I mentioned, we were talking about Spansylvania and building a bridge. There's actually a game that lives in here um, called bridge Arama that again looks at those concepts. What type of material can I use to build a bridge? Is it going to be strong enough? Is this material long enough? All of those kind of things, but it does again do it in a really playful learning um, at way. So um, you can see here that just like a lot of PBS Kids games also, they want to have parent-child activities, ways that you can, again, foster and extend that learning far beyond what the app itself does. So there are also hands-on activities that you can do at home if you're interested um, for each one of the games. Um, and there's even drawing prompts. It mentions here there's drawing prompts to inspire creativity and planning. So again, some of what, what they're doing, it's just as important to think through that process and then go back and test it. So maybe they're going to create something and then they're going to go back and test and see if it works. Alright, so the next game that I want to highlight, this is a brand new game from the Cat in the Hat. Um, this is called the Cat in the Hat Invents. Um, so this one is you're going to be building a robot and again using that STEM learning, so again science, technology, engineering, and math, you're going to be learning to um, experiment and problem solve. Uh, they're also going to be uh, they can use the cat in the hat as kind of giving hints if they're stuck on something. The cat in the hat offers ways that they can be able to take a look at that. So you can see that there's all sorts of new worlds for them to explore. This is again building upon the other app as well. But again, it just uh, helps them to expand and extend their learning. So I mentioned that I wanted to highlight one of the activities, um, really simple activities that you can do at home. Um, this one is found on the PBS Parents app. This one is called Go for a Length Hunt. Um, so as your children are learning, when they're first learning to measure things, they can use two different ways. One is called a non-standard form of measurement. And all that means is we're not using a ruler or we're not using a tape measure. We're not using something exact like that. We're using anything that we have. And so one of the, the um, things that it talks about here is that you could use yarn, you can use string, you can use strips of paper, you can use whatever you have laying around the house. Um, you can figure out, maybe it's a book, maybe you're going to use a book and you're going to figure out how many books tall are you? How many books tall is your child? Um, or how many books does it take to get from the living room to the kitchen? Those type of things. So you can do this at home, um, in your house, you can do it outside, you can do this anywhere. So this is just introducing a non-standard form of measurement. Now you're more than welcome as well um, to use a ruler. Maybe your child is older and so, or maybe you have more than one child and so one child is working on a non-standard form of measurement. So we're gonna see how many books does it take to get from the living room to the kitchen. But maybe you have an older kid and your older kid is going to be using a ruler or a tape measure and figuring out how many feet is it from the living room to the kitchen. Um, so again, you can adjust this based on whatever meets the needs of your child. Um, but as I said, you can find this right here in the, in the PBS Parents website. One thing I wanted to show you too, um, this is just a little bitty, uh, this is just another additional tool that same thing, same concept, talking about measuring. Um, and this is looking at a non-standard form of measurement too, but this one uses the cat in the hat's hat. 
So you can see right here that you can use the cat in the hats hat to measure and see how many feet tall or how many hats tall are you? How many hats tall is your child? So again, this is just one way, one cute fun way that you can use a non-standard form of measurement um, when looking at trying to figure out and going on that length hunt. Um, this is another one is, that is at the end of it. This is a measurement snail. So this uh, would be maybe for a few, maybe a little bit older, but this one you just put together with tape. You print this out, put it together with tape and a pencil, um, and they can measure how many blocks. So how many blocks is something? Is it three blocks or four blocks, etc.? All right. So I've kind of, again, really quickly went through some of the resources that are available about Cat in the Hat. Um, like I said, the main thing is that uh, we're not expecting you uh, to, to memorize all of this information or to figure out what we're just thinking about and encouraging you to do is just to build on your child's natural inquisitive nature and figure out ways by asking additional questions. Why do they think that? Expanding their learning so that as they're just doing the simple everyday routines and tasks that they have throughout the day, you're just building upon that natural inquisitive nature.